We are doing no more food shopping for as long as possible and I'm actually very excited about this. It's very much long overdue. I feel like the food in my freezer, my cupboards, my fridge has been piling up. Not only that, I want to um, batch cook quite a lot and I can't batch cook if there's no room in my freezer. So first things first, if you haven't already, I have been doing freezer, cupboard, fridge, stock tape. So I'm not going to go to a supermarket and do a big food shop until I've sort of worked my way through the meal plans that I have been doing. The absolutely savior of the week though has been my Green Chef order. I'm thanking my last week self. I made an order on Green Chef um, for some beautiful meals just to come to my door whilst I just get this kitchen sorted. I started the week off with some fresh, delicious, healthy, nutritious meals and I'm so thankful my last week self did that. Um, but thank you to Green Chef who is sponsoring this segment of the video. If you've never heard of Green Chef, it is a meal delivery service. I'm a customer outside of working with them. They are the sister company of HelloFresh actually, so you may have heard of HelloFresh. Green Chef is more diet specific, so if you're vegan, if you live a vegetarian diet, or if you want a high protein. I've found, because I'm incorporating as much veg as I possibly can into my life, and this is something I've become so hyper aware of, especially in the last 12 months. I don't know what it is, I just woke up one day and I thought, I want to eat so much more varieties of veg and I want to enjoy them. Um, and I found Green Chef has paralleled with that ethos that I've been having so well. As I said, I order it about once a month and it gives me three, four, five days off of thinking about what to buy at the supermarket or what to meal plan for my family. One thing we do do to save money is we're not eating out anymore. Things are super duper expensive, so to save money, we do treat ourselves to something like a Green Chef box every month and um, we double it up as like a date night. So for instance, actually last night we had a Green Chef meal and it was the steak and veg and it was one of the Green Chef meals. Um, and I specifically chose that meal because this week it was actually my dad's anniversary and he passed away four years ago. And we thought, you know what, he, would, he, loved, he loved steak <laughs> and veg and chips and things like that. So that also gave me a bit of sigh of relief this week because it has been a hard week. For things like that, it's an absolute life saviour. They have given me a discount to share with you guys. It's 40 Soferina. It's going to get you 40% off your first box and 25% off your next four boxes. So I always suggest just try it because that is a huge discount on some very, very good food. Um, especially if you want to be really specific with how you're eating at the moment or if you want to teach yourself new things. So the first time I tried Green Chef, it was specifically because I wanna try more vegan and vegetarian foods and I don't know where to start. I have these amazing recipe cards just telling me what to do with the food already delivered to my house. I'm not going to waste food because I've got it already portioned. And um, I'm also learning something. So. My discount is for anyone who's new, so anyone who's not tried Green Chef, but also to previous customers um, that may have cancelled four weeks or more ago. That's a very, very good deal. So if you've tried them before and you think, actually this month I've got a really busy month ahead or next month I've got a busy month ahead, it's going to be the Easter holidays, um, things like that, and I want to try some new things, then I absolutely wholeheartedly recommend. We so look forward to our box every month. So good, it's the Fable Mushroom and Red Wine Ragu. If that is on the list, I highly recommend it. But anyway, there's loads of good recipes. Yeah, if you want to get a huge discount on some food, give yourself a little bridge, um, treat yourself if you're not eating out like Lawrence and I, go for it. Use my link below, I've left everything down below for you. So what I'm doing is starting, this is probably gonna be like a three, four part video because I'm starting with the fridge, anything fresh, and we're going to be eating that first. So those are the meals from the fridge. Um, I've also got some things in the freezer that I'm eating this week. Um, but basically, we're gonna go as long as we can without doing a big food shop from the supermarket. I'm really excited to be doing this. It really makes you a bit more savvy. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like this kind of content, give it a thumbs up. One thing I started doing um, a while ago is changing how I snack. How I used to snack was so 
bad for me. Snacking I would do would cost me a lot of money. It would waste a lot of food. I was gaining a lot of unnecessary weight. And I realized, oh my gosh, so many of my issues are down to how I'm snacking. Um, and this is always highlighted when I'm doing like a no food shopping thing or just um, trying to just make meals for, from food I already have in my house because I always come undone at the snacking thing. If I can prepare myself lots of like quick grabby type snacks and make sure those things are in the house at all times, I am going to be saving myself a lot of money because I'm not going to rush to the shops, over buy food or buy food that we sort of don't really want or need. So. A few things I always, always have in my house is fruit, and for me, apples and bananas. Apples and bananas. And then I always have nuts and yogurt. Nuts are great because they just last a while and you can just take a handful at a time. And I normally get like nuts and raisins. And then I always make sure I've made myself a really sort of treat snack. That is what I used to get so much enjoyment out of from snacks. like. The feeling of a treat like chocolate bars and these really sugary peanut butter granola bars. So to cut a long story short, I'm gonna make some flapjacks now. I've made them in several videos before, but I know I'm constantly getting new view viewers, especially at the moment. Um, so if you are new, welcome. Um, so I wanted to make them again in today's video. I'm gonna make a big batch of them. And um, what I do is normally keep them in a little lunchbox in the fridge and we snack on them and they're good for you. And they're also really sweet and they're also really delicious and they really fill a gap um, for me, my husband and my toddler. So let's make some flapjacks. <laughs> flapjacks. Um, now, the traditional flapjack recipes you might find online are extremely sweet. Um, these ones, oh, I'm not gonna lie, I think they're really, really good. A few of you, in fact, a fair few of you now, come back and tell me how much you love my flapjacks. So, thank you. I'm gonna add peanut butter into them today just because I fancy it. It's just a bit more protein. There'll be a bit more filling. Every now and then I do add some of this peanut butter in and it works really, work really well. Um, this isn't sweetened, this is just literally peanuts. You need some oats, you want a little bit of brown sugar. You can add normal caster sugar if you want. I tend to go with brown just because it makes it a bit more caramelly flavoured. Um, a seed mix is vital for your flapjacks. I can't believe how many flapjacks shops sell with no seeds in them. Like, where is the good texture, the crunchiness? Um, I always add seed mix. So this has like sunflowers in, pumpkin seeds. If you don't want seed mix, you just want to add one type of seed, my recommendation is pumpkin seeds because they work so well in flapjacks. Date molasses, lots of you ask where I get this from. I found it on Ocado. It's often like sort of, well, at the time I found it was being cleared to reduce, cleared, reduced to clear. Um, so I'm hoping it's still on Ocado the next time I do actually shop at Ocado because this has been absolutely lovely in flapjacks and it's a natural sweetener and it's got lots of like potassium in it. Use honey is my next natural sweetener. I use lots and lots of honey. The honey in the date molasses also gives it that sort of softness that you want with a flapjack. And then we're gonna use butter. I tend to use salted butter because a little bit of salt with the sweetness, it brings out the sweetness a little bit more. And then I just throw it all together. And um, essentially, I'll put the measurements down below. Uh, you just literally throw it all in a bowl, mix it. I find mixing with my hands the best and put it in the oven, put it in a square tray in the oven for 10 minutes at 180. Take it out, completely cool it, then cut them into squares. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to already having some of these later. Okay, one of the fresh meals um, I am making actually for our dinner tonight 
is one pan peanuts and lime noodles. This is one of the Green Chef ones because I do have this to use up and there's lots of veggies in there and I'm worried they'll go off. So the first thing I need to do is make this. This is sort of my last bridge between this and now just going in hard on my fridge and freezer stuff. And it has four portions of your five a day, which is I've just taste tested these. Absolutely, chef kiss, delicious, glorious, exactly the type of food we needed tonight. So we're gonna go and eat this um, and really enjoy it. So yesterday we had a roast chicken dinner. I actually totally forgot to film it, but it was a weekend. So I usually don't film on a weekend. <laughs> Um, but we had a lovely roast dinner. Um, for lunch today, we had leftover roast chicken in wraps with the leftover stuffing and a bit of salad. And they were delicious, they were really nice. And then tonight for din dinner, because we have lots of leftover roast potatoes, I thought we'll have bubble and squeak. Bubble and squeak is one of those absolutely delicious dinners. One of those dinners that I grew up with. It's a great way of using your leftover Sunday veg or just a load of veg and potato type thing that you might have left over. Now, I have lots of leftover potatoes, but I don't actually have leftover veggies because we ate all the veggies from yesterday. So I'm gonna cook a few carrots and stuff. Um, and I'm also, because I've got lots of cauliflower, fresh cauliflower in the fridge, I need to use as much cauliflower as possible. Make a nice bubble and squeak. If you don't know what bubble and squeak is, it's fried up veg and potato. You can have a side of beans with it. We normally have a side of beans and maybe a fried egg. I don't know if I'm hungry enough for an egg as well, so I might just have beans on the side. Um, but it's basically just like fried potato veg with beans. It sounds, just doesn't sound that great, does it? But it's actually delicious. And um, sometimes people have sausages with it. These potatoes from last night, we actually haven't got too many. So I'm going to use one of these recipes um, from Green Chef. The recipe teaches you how to make like mashed potato out of cauliflower. And I think that will work really, really well with um, adding like bulking up the sort of potato element of bubble and squeak rather than cooking more potatoes. Bubble and squeak is ready. We've added a fried egg to it. One thing that goes really, really well is ground white pepper. Um, so I'm just gonna put it all over, particularly the beans. Um, so yeah, we're going to enjoy this now. I wonder if the eggs are, the eggs are done how I like them, all oh, bit gooey and not too gooey. Um, so yeah, we're gonna enjoy this. Okay, using up what I have in the house, um, it's coming up to lunchtime. I've got the biggest cauliflower floret ever in the world. Um, and I thought, what can I do with this? Because I'm really funny about, like, I don't like cauliflower cheese. Just never liked it. So that would be like the natural thing most people would do. But I do like spicy cauliflower. Um, we made bang bang cauliflower and, is it cauliflower 59? Gobi 59 or something before? Both of those loved. Um, I don't have any panko breadcrumbs in the house, and obviously I'm not um, going out to buy things at the moment, so I'm just trying to make do with what I've got. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like spicy air fried cauliflower 
thing. I'm going to get all the cauliflower together, put it in a bowl, um, add lots of olive oil, and then I'm going to add some smoked paprika, some cumin, lots of crushed garlic, a little bit of cayenne pepper, salt and pepper, mix it all up and then I'm going to air fry it. I'm tempted to do it in the oven because I'm not sure how it's going to turn out in the air fryer because I've never done cauliflower in the air fryer. But life's about risks and it will be a lot quicker in the air fryer. The first things first, marinate this big cauliflower and get it in the air fryer. It's in the air fryer now, I'm just going to keep checking on it every sort of five-ish mins. Um, loads of cauliflower left, so I'm just going to pop this in a freezer bag and put it in the freezer. I was hoping to avoid putting more things in the freezer, but I don't want to let it go to waste either, so um, I'm going to put this in the freezer. So blooming good. Um, I feel like growing up, some of these veggies we were fed were just cooked all in the wrong way with zero seasoning. And I used to hate cauliflower, but now I'm really growing to love it. How I've just done it there, and it's worked really well in the air fryer, by the way, because it's crispy, but it's still soft. It's not like that, that uncooked crunchy, it's crispy. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna plate that up. Um, delish. I am just about to make dinner. I'm going to make my classic age-old chicken and rice. It's gonna be sriracha chicken and rice. Um, I'm using chicken thighs, because those are the ones we had in the freezer. They are with skin and with bone, so I do need to do it a little bit different to how I've done it in previous videos. But it's nice and simple. Um, I'm just gonna brown the chicken on the tops first, and then I'm going to bake them in the oven. That reminds me, turn the oven on. And um, then I'm going to cook rice separately in the microwave and then take the chicken out, stir the rice into the dish that I cooked the chicken in so all the juices combine, add some peas, add a bit more sriracha sauce and seasoning if it needs it, maybe a bit of butter, and that's going to be our dinner, chicken and rice. Um, I always have peas in the freezer, rice in the cupboard, and um, things like maybe chicken or tofu. And that is always gonna make you a really, really good meal. I'm also going to be making banana loaf. <laughs> Um, so I've got some butter, some bananas that need going. I'm going to also be making banana loaf, so it's gonna be a bit of a rush, but I like to uh, overcomplicate things for myself and make sure I'm making two completely different meals at the same time, because that makes things really, really rushed for me. And it's quarter past four, so um, we are getting ready for the sort of afternoon, evening with a two-year-old hecticness. So that's good, let's do that. 